and welcome to x-ray review in this video we're going to go through the congenital block vertebrae what it looks like on an x-ray as well as multiple radiographic examples so if you enjoy don't forget to like and subscribe so let's look at a normal lateral cervical view on the left and then one with a congenital block on the right if we look at the c2 c3 segment on the right side with the congenital block there's a hypoplastic disc and then posterior element fusion and this is a classic appearance of a congenital block versus a normal segment so a block vertebra is a congenital vertebral anomaly where there's failure of separation of at least two vertebral segments this fusion can be partial or complete. Sometimes the posterior elements are involved uh, and sometimes they're not fused. Radiographically, we're looking for a few characteristic features to include a wasp waist appearance, which is a concave appearance to the anterior aspect of the fused vertebral segments. There's often a hypoplastic or rudimentary uh, intervertebral disc. There can be that posterior element fusion. And then sometimes there's a possible alteration of the normal vertebral body height. They can either appear shorter or taller uh, depending upon their location. And a few other things to look for. Whenever you see a congenital anomaly, always look for other congenital anomalies. Uh, conditions such as file syndrome or Vactorel conditions can be associated with congenital blocks. And because of the fused segment, you're going to have uh, a higher probability for instability or altered biomechanics at the segments above and below the fusion uh, because those segments have to compensate for those loss of uh, biomechanical function. So flexion and extension or stress studies can often be helpful for excluding instability when congenital blocks are present. So now let's go through multiple radiographic examples of congenital block vertebrae. This first one is a C5, C6 block vertebra with a hypoplastic intervertebral disc and no obvious evidence of posterior element fusion. The second case, this patient has multiple congenital block vertebra at C2, C3 and at C5 and C6, as well as occipitalization of CO, C1. In this example, we have a congenitally fused segment with three vertebral segments, C4, 5, and C6, with a nice example of a wasp waist appearance or that concave appearance to the anterior aspect of the vertebral body. Here's another example of three vertebral segments that are congenitally fused with associated posterior element fusion, and this is at C5 through C7. Here is a C3, C4 congenital block with a good example of a hypoplastic disc and posterior element fusion. And in this example, we have a C2, C3 congenital block with posterior element fusion and a remnant disc. On this lateral cervical view, you can see a good example of a congenital block. At the cervicothoracic junction at C7-T1, there's a hypoplastic disc and a wasp waist appearance. This is an example of a C2-C3 congenital block with a small remnant disc and posterior element fusion. And here is a C4-C5 congenital block with a concave anterior vertebral body, remnant disc, and posterior element fusion. So a few more examples in the cervical spine. Here's a C2, C3 congenital block with a remnant disc and posterior element fusion. This patient has multiple segments that are congenitally fused at C5 through C7 and then advanced degenerative changes at the segments above uh, this congenital fusion. And again, there's a higher probability of instability, altered biomechanics, and then, um, which can then lead to early degenerative changes. And this is a good example of this. 
And here's a frontal cervical thoracic view of a patient who has file syndrome, which is multiple congenital blocks. And sometimes radiographs um, can't show the whole picture because it's a 2D image of a 3D object. And advanced imaging such as CT or MRI may be necessary to fully evaluate for the um, congenital segments as well as any underlying neurologic complications. And moving down into the thoracic spine, here's a good example of a congenital block. It's not as common to see congenital blocks in the thoracic spine as opposed to in the cervical and lumbar regions. So they certainly can occur in the thoracic spine, but with less frequency. There are two different congenital block segments in this patient's thoracic spine. It's a little hard to see due to suboptimal technical factors, but these are the two congenital block segments. Here's one more example showing the hypoplastic or remnant disc and wasp waist appearance very well. The posterior element fusion can be extremely challenging to see on an x-ray. Uh, sometimes you'll need advanced imaging to fully appreciate that. Here is a congenital block at L3, L4, and you'll note a hypoplastic disc, concave appearance to the anterior aspect of the vertebral segments, and then a large spinous process and associated posterior element fusion. Here is a congenital block in the thoracolumbar junction. This example is an L2, L3 congenital block with the triad of radiographic findings. And then note the anterolisthesis um, of this segment in relation to L4. This is an L4, L5 congenital block with a wasp waist appearance, hypoplastic disc, and posterior element fusion. This is an L3, L4 congenital block with no obvious evidence of posterior element fusion. And here's one last example of a congenital block in the upper lumbar spine with what looks like osseous malformation or deformity of the posterior elements as well. All right, so let's uh, go through a couple multiple choice questions. Uh, which of the following conditions may be associated with a congenital block vertebrae? Is it Paget's disease, spondylodiscitis, Darth Vader syndrome, atlantoaxial narrowing, or Klippel file syndrome? And the correct answer is E, Klippel file syndrome. True or false? Fusion can be partial or complete and can often involve fusion of the posterior elements. And this statement would be true. Approximately 50% of the time, you'll see posterior element fusion. Which of the following is not a radiographic finding of a congenital block vertebrae? A, wasp waste, B, hypoplastic disc, C, alteration of vertebral body height, D, convex anterior vertebral margin, or E, posterior element fusion. And D, convex anterior vertebral margin. It should read concave anterior vertebral margin. All right, thanks for listening and hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe and any questions or comments, please put them below. Thanks again.